Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we are going to talk about the Scenes panel. If you already have some familiarity with SketchUp, then you know what Scenes are. And for those of you who don't know, scenes are basically how we see the model. That's, that's where the camera is, uh, what, what is being shown, what scene. It's, it's a saved view of the model. That's what a scene is. In the desktop uh, software, when we talk about the scenes panel, we're talking about just controlling that. In SketchUp for iPad, there's actually quite a bit more to the scenes panel, and we're taking a look at that right now. Okay, so I have a real simple just little mock-up house here. The The important thing here is, is that uh, it's not symmetrical, right? So there's a door on the front, not on the back. There's a chimney on one side, not on the other. So it's a non-symmetric model. That's gonna be important as we start talking about, you know, setting views and scenes here. So I'm gonna pull up the scenes panel and we're gonna look at everything that's in here, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna buzz over. At the top, we have a handful of buttons. These are for the most part related to actually working with scenes. Before we start in the scenes, I just wanna mention these other two drop downs here. We have camera and we have standard views. Uh, the thing to illustrate here is when we, we talk about the scenes panel and it's gonna have control over the scenes, no question, but additionally, it has other camera options. So other view options. Uh, we can think about the scenes panel as being all the things that control how we look at the model. So um, not the how the model is displayed or anything, not less styles or anything like that, but how we as, as the person behind the camera looking at it uh, view it. So just to look here, I have some options under camera, perspective, parallel projection, or two point perspective. I'm in perspective right now. Perspective gives this like a uh, false sense of perspective. That's why it's called perspective. So the things that are closer to the camera appear larger, and as things get further away from the camera, they get smaller. That's the idea of perspective. So it means when I look at a house like this, the back sides of this house, overhang to overhang is smaller than out on the front. So you can see that, you know, as we zoom in closer, that that gets exaggerated. The fur further back is is further or er, further away from the camera. If we switch to parallel projection, then this hasn't changed. You're looking at it from the same spot, but see how these are parallel moving up the sides. So the width at the back of the house, is the same as the front of the house. This is how things exist in real life, but we don't see it this way because as things get further from our eye, they appear further away and they appear smaller. So this is not a bad view for certain things. Like if I did want to create, you know, an, a view of the front of the house, I would probably do that with something like a parallel projection because then I see, you know, like I'm used to seeing on a set of plans, this is what the front should look like. Working a lot of times, uh, people prefer to go in perspective because it's more like things will look in the real world. And then we have a two point perspective, which is a slightly different way to view three dimensional geometry than the standard perspective. Generally speaking, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say majority of modeling is done in perspective and a good chunk of output happens in parallel projection. All right, below that we have standard views. This is gonna be quick. These let you just jump boom to a single standard view. Most of these are very simple, super quick and easy to jump to these. Um, the one that's a little bit different from the rest is ISO because what ISO will do, it'll give you an isometric view, but it's gonna snap to that. It's like a three quarter view, right? So I see it. I'm looking at an angle, not, not looking directly in line with any of the axes, but at 45 degrees to the axes. And what it will do is when you hit ISO, it'll jump to the quadrant that you are closest to currently. So as I hit ISO, boom, that's a perfect three quarter view from the quadrant that I was looking at. So I'm not gonna always get the same thing. So tapping ISO is not always gonna bring me back to the same isometric view. It's the isometric uh, view based on the quadrant you are in right now. So uh, that's stuff simple. That's super easy. Um, to go a little bit deeper, let's talk about scenes. So I don't have any scenes in here right now, but let's make some scenes and then you can kind of see how this works. Like I said, these buttons at the top all have to do with scenes. So if I come in here, I'm just going to create a scene. So I like this view that I'm looking at right here. Actually, I'm going to get around a little bit more. 
get Sal off to the side, and then say plus to create a scene. That made a scene. So now what that means is if I'm anywhere else in the model, I can hit this and it will return to that scene. That is what a scene is if you don't know. If I hit the little ellipses here, uh, I have some options. I can delete that scene, I can edit that scene, and I can update that scene. So if I click on edit, delete, I'm gonna assume you guys figured out delete. You're smart guys, you're, you're, you're intelligent people. I'm sure you figured out how delete what delete does. In here in edit scene, we can control the name, we can enter a description, and we have the option of including it in animation. So when I run an animation, it's gonna go down these scenes, one scene to the next, and that's what the animation will be, all the scenes that have this checked. Turning one of these off is gonna exclude it from the animation. The properties below, you can see all of these here, are the values that are gonna be saved into each scene. So when I save a scene, I'm saying create a thumbnail, save the camera location, save the state of, of style and fog, save shadows, save axis location, save visibility, save active section planes, save top level geometry, and save what is hidden. So none of this gets thrown out, but it's saying display the values connected to these things. So what I can do, it means I can create scenes that are just for placing the camera and not changing the view of the model. So this is really nice because you can actually control, every scene doesn't have to control everything. You can actually make certain scenes do only portions of that. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna go to not quite overhead, but maybe close to overhead from behind because it's very different from the other. And I'll say, add another scene there. So now I can see, I click from scene one to scene two, and I go back and forth. All right, let's say we wanna make a change. I like that, but I'd really rather see it from over here. I like this view better. I could create a new scene now and delete my scene one, or I could take scene one and hit update scene. Update scene says, okay, I'm gonna replace that previous scene with the one you now have on the screen, and it verifies what all do you want to save for this scene, just like when I created one before. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now when I jump back and forth, you'll see it goes from that back view now to the other side because I updated that scene. So the other things I have here, I have the option of playing. If I hit play, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go from this one scene to the other scene, and then it's gonna go back. And it's gonna keep doing that until I hit stop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop that, stop that. Um, that animation, that's the animation I was talking about earlier, is based on which scene say show me the animation let's make another one let's make one of uh let's make something crazy let's look underneath here and save this as a scene now i'm going to go to that scene i'm going to say edit that scene and don't include that in the animation please okay so internally it said remove that from the animation we can see out here where the name is it actually put parentheses around where it says scene two so if i hit play now it's going to go through jump to scene one to scene two, and now it'll go back to scene one, and then back to scene two. It's not jumping to three because I have that excluded. As far as how it plays that, that is what's under this gear right here. So in this gear, I say, have this one option is enable scene transitions. If I turn that off and I jump from one scene to the next, it's instantaneous as soon as I tap it. This is a great way to work in a model, by the way. Um, that, that, that smooth moving the camera around is nice for exporting or showing something in your model. But if you're working and you wanna just jump to the next thing, you might wanna turn that off. It's gonna make it a lot easier. The other thing that's under here, if I do have that turned on, is how long is the transition time? So we had it at two seconds. Let's jump it up to something like five seconds. And then the other thing we have is delay. Delay says when I get to a scene, how long do I sit there before I go to the next scene? So let's, let's say take five seconds to get to a scene and stay there for two seconds. All right, now I'm gonna play the animation. So what's gonna do is sit here for two, one, two, and now it's gonna take five seconds to go to the next scene. Oh, here, let me go click on the first scene. Start, let's start from there. Boom, all right, so it's gonna stay here for two seconds, and then it's gonna spend five seconds moving around to the other scene. So you can see, not, not, I mean, 
It's not bad. It's just slow. And you wouldn't really want to work in this, right? Because I would want to go, oh, let me jump to the back. Okay. And I can keep working. So this, you want to spend some time fine tuning that. Like I said, for working, I would turn it off. For output, it depends on how far apart your scenes are. There is only one value for this animation. So every scene is going to stay for two seconds and then spend five seconds moving to the next scene. It's not on a scene by scene basis. This is the entire thing. Once you have that animation set up the way you want, you can use export to send that file out. And uh, there we go, change to animation. And I can export that animation of running through the scenes, the scenes that are included in the animation. But that, in a nutshell, is the information that we see inside of the scenes panel. Uh, hopefully that helped. Uh, like I said, scenes is one that varies quite a bit version to version. And the fact that there's all those display options and, and, and uh, uh, you know, view settings and that kind of stuff does make the scenes panel that's in SketchUp for iPad different from other places we see that. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this video and this series. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.